With practically everyone being disappointed by NVIDIA's RTX 40 series' obscene pricing, AMD now has a golden opportunity to win the market by a landslide. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. The tech and PC hardware community has been quite riled up about Nvidia's RTX 40 series announcement and not in a good way. I was actually a little bit surprised to see how much backlash they were getting. We've been getting screwed over in the GPU market for quite some time now, but I'd always see some people or fanboys defend the bad releases. But this time around, it seems like everyone is trashing Nvidia, and rightfully so. The only card in the stack that makes any sense to buy and seems like a decent successor is the RTX 4090. Though that also still remains to be seen as we don't have any independent reviews for the card. However, the 4080s, and more specifically the 4070 which Nvidia has disguised as a 4080 to soften the backlash, they're a joke. Compared to what the 3080 and 3070 launched for just two years ago, the price increases here is insane. Now, I've covered this in a bit more detail on my launch video coverage, so I'm not going to go repeating all that again. Long story short, high prices are bad, and people are mad. Since the announcement, I've seen people post online and making memes about how AMD will come and save the gaming market, how they'll give PC gamers the cheap GPUs they're looking for, how RDNA 3 will thrash at a Lovelace, and while it's fun to fantasize about it, I'm personally on the fence thinking that this is probably not going to happen, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. First, let's discuss what they have already done for their current gen GPUs. While AMD recently announced official price cuts for the RX 6000 family of GPUs, where now an RX 6900 XT has an MSRP of 699, the 6800 XT is at 599, and the 6700 XT is at 379. There were of course other models too, but the GPUs that AMD refreshed, such as the 6 6950 XT and 6750 XT were a joke to begin with. They were simply released to take advantage of the high pricing landscape at the time of the mining boom, so I basically ignored those cards. However, even for the rest of the lineup, while I'm glad to see the lower prices here, I was looking at this list and going, these are the prices that these cards should have launched with at the beginning. Don't get me wrong, compared to Nvidia's RTX 3080 lineup, the 6900 XT made the 3090 look laughable at its 1499 price point. However, GPUs like the 3090 and 6900 XT were already close to the 3080 and 6800 XT respectfully that it didn't even make sense for most gamers to buy in the first place, so they were just inflated hardware to begin with. Nonetheless, I am happy to see that AMD is taking some kind of initiative here to cut down prices and align them with what's more appropriate with the current circumstances in the market. Because mining is dead, and the overall demand from PC gamers is also lower than what it was during the lockdown era. So at least they're not acting out of touch like their competitors are. But circling back to the prices, if you want a GPU that's as fast as a 3090 and plain old raw rasterization, you do not care about ray tracing, you don't care about CUDA or things like DLSS, then AMD should be your go-to option. It would be for me, but the only reason why I still have a 2080 in my personal rig is because I do use CUDA for some apps, and AMD unfortunately in that area are severely lacking, though that's a topic for a different video. It will take some time for retailers to start reflecting these cheaper prices, but it's already starting to happen. I mean, I went on Newegg and saw this ASRock 6800 XT listed at 579 Not a bad deal at all, man, especially considering RTX 3080s haven't even dropped to this level yet. Shifting our focus away from last gen, let's talk about AMD's future generation, RDNA 3. Now, I'll be honest with you guys when it comes to leaks surrounding RDNA 3, I haven't really been keeping up much, and that's also because compared to the number of leaks that were coming out, surrounding RTX 40 series, there just wasn't that much. AMD seems like they're a lot tighter lipped about RDNA 3, whereas with Nvidia, we had been hearing rumors and leaks about specs going as far back as early 2021. What we do officially know about RDNA 3 is that it will provide a 50% performance per watt improvement over RDNA 2, which is quite drastic nonetheless. This seems to be the right target if they want to be competitive with Nvidia in that area. RDNA 3 will also make use of multiple chips similar to what they have already on the desktop for their Ryzen CPUs. And this is huge because for the first time in the GPU industry, we're getting this tech featured on consumer graphics cards. However, how this will translate to real world performance still remains to be seen. And we just don't know considering we've never really had anything like
like this on the market before. We also know that AMD will be utilizing a new node, TSMC's 5 nanometers, which is more advanced than the previous 7 nanometer node that RDNA2 utilized, and typically with node shrinks, the performance gains that come along with it are quite substantial. Compared to Nvidia, who are using a custom designed 4 nanometer process that they collaborated with TSMC on, it makes it seem like they're at a disadvantage, but honestly, I feel like a lot of that has to do with just marketing. We've seen Nvidia in the past do the same with Turing that was on 12 nanometers, but it was really just a tweaked 16 nanometer node that Pascal used. So the deficit in nodes really is not a huge deal here. Naturally, with new hardware coming out, we're going to be seeing the usual Twitter leakers post our leaks pertaining to the hardware. From the information we've seen, we can get a pretty good idea on what we can expect from the models, such as the 7900 XT, 7800 XT, 7700 XT, and more. This table from WCCF Tech gives us a good outlook, just comparing the amount of stream processors that Navi 31 will have, which is what the 7900 XT will be based on, versus Navi 21, which is what cards like the 6900 XT and 6800 XT were based on, there's a dramatic jump of nearly 2.4x. There will be an increased memory bandwidth, increase in infinity cache, and that's not even taking into account the performance increases that will come from architectural improvements. Along with that, just recently hardware leaker on Twitter, HXL, said that RDNA 3 will allegedly hit 4 GHz in terms of the GPU clock speed. That would be about a GHz and a half higher than what Nvidia advertises for the 4090. Taking all of that into account, I'm sure there's a lot more info out there, but it really does seem like RDNA 3 is going to be a huge leap over RDNA 2, and it should be very competitive against Ada Lovelace, or perhaps even faster. That's the thing, on paper it sounds crazy fast, but we've seen a lot of hardware released by AMD over the years which sounds great on paper, but turns out to be much worse. So that's why I don't want to get into the whole performance comparison topic right now, until we see some benchmark leaks. The other thing I did want to talk about was pricing because that is ultimately what it comes down to. Like I said at the beginning of the video, people are making memes thinking that AMD is a charity and you will get 40, 80, 16 GB performance for like half the cost. If you are thinking this way, then you're delusional and you are setting yourself up for disappointment. As much as I would love to see AMD just keep the same pricing for the 7000 series compared to what we got for the 6000 series, I just don't believe that's going to happen. I would love to be wrong, and if I am, I'll immediately say, screw Nvidia, just buy AMD, don't even think about anything else. But let's be real here, the AMD we're dealing with today is a very different animal than what they were during the R9 200 days. AMD and the Radeon Technologies Group do not want to be seen as a budget or economical offering when compared to Nvidia. They have been positioning themselves as the industry leader these past couple of years that offers leadership performance that will come at a premium. I mean, haven't you guys been paying attention with the recent generation? Cards like the 6700 XT and 6500 XT had absolutely no business being priced at what they were, but they could get away with it because when the alternative was no cheaper, then what other choice do you have? But we can go back a few generations further. AMD released the RX Vega 64 at 499 back in late 2017, when it was over a year late when compared to the GTX 1080, performed worse on average, and drew a lot more power. Despite that, they didn't care at all about competing in price. Just take a look at their CPUs. The mainstream 6 core starts at $300, and that's not even taking into account new motherboard pricing. The point is, AMD today isn't the same budget brand that we enthusiasts cherished and fell in love with. They want to get far away from that notion as much as possible. When Nvidia launched the RTX 40 series, AMD probably looked at this and said, awesome, we now have the green light to also raise prices, because they have no interest in competing in price. Along with that, with the recent official price cuts, I can see AMD taking a similar approach to what Nvidia did, where they will say here's our new 7000 series, sure it's expensive, but for those wanting cheaper options, we still have our 6000 series on the market. There are two scenarios here that I can see playing out. AMD launches the RX 7900 XT at $1200, which will be positioned as the RTX 4090 competitor, followed by the RX 7800 XT at $899, which will be positioned to target the 4080 16GB, and then a 7800 non-XT or 7700 XT at 599 which will target the RTX 4070 aka the 4080 12GB. If AMD does this, then they will immediately win the hearts of all PC gamers, everyone will celebrate the release and praise them for significantly undercutting Nvidia. Not that these prices aren't also a bit inflated compared to last gen because 
Ideally, me personally, I would like to see them release new GPUs at what the previous gen counterparts sold for, but we all know prices are going to be increasing, so that's not realistic. However, these price points would still give AMD the golden opportunity they're looking for to really take Nvidia's cake and eat it as well. The second scenario, which is the one I'm leaning towards because of the reasons I pointed out earlier, is that AMD will just knock off about $50 or $100 off of Nvidia's SKUs and call that a day. Because they don't want to position themselves as that, as that budget brand, they want to be seen as Nvidia's equals. So the 7900 XT will be $1499, the 7800 XT will be $1149, and the 7800 non-XT will be $799. Or it also could be a repeat of last gen, where if the 7800 non-XT is slightly faster than a 4080 12 GB, then AMD might price it at, say, $979. And then along with that, like I said, with the official price cuts, they'll just be like, you want cheaper GPUs? Go for last gen. These are for people who are wanting the best of the best, the new stuff. So there is my prediction on what I believe is going to happen when AMD announces RDNA 3 on the 3rd of November. I know it's not what most of you probably wanted to hear, but I'm just taking into consideration their past releases, their recent behavior in the market, and most signs just point towards them not undercutting Nvidia, but joining them. I'm not in the least bit worried about RDNA 3's performance, it's pricing that it really just comes down to. So before you make your AMD will save us or I'm switching to AMD comments, just hold off on that thought and let's see what they really do. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.